Look at the picture. See the skull. Visible Frankenstein controls. The Brain Thoughts Broadcasting Radio. The Frankenstein Earphone Radio. The latest new skull reforming to contain all Frankenstein controls. Tommy, this is Kara. この前を教えてよ手に負った男フレンクンシュタインコントロール That was fantastic <laughs> Taylor, it's almost like you've been watching a lot of One Piece lately What's up with that? I don't know, what are you talking about? One piece of shit, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Stupid Yeah, it's <laughs> really a stupid day oh. <laughs> This is manga for babies I was, uh oh, Call of Duty Attack on Titan, man <laughs> <laughs> I was, talking, uh, I was talking to FBM recently about I forget what we were talking about. Um, it was a character from some book, and his um, head cannon image for that character was a. Cause I was having trouble visualizing this character, and his his head cannon for them was somebody from One Piece that I'd not heard of before. Oh, and do I you said, know what the character's name is or what they look like? I could probably get that information for you. Uh, he has like snake teeth all up, like a Glasgow smile, and he's kind of got short hair. Uh, Okay, 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 keep going. Uh, I'd have to figure what, it out. What color is his hair? I don't remember no more. It's just one piece. Because right now, that sounds like Roshinante. Or, or Corazon, as other ah. people call him. Ah. Yeah. What did he say? This is this is just going to lead me down some tangent where I'm surfing through my texts from him <laughs> no, for I love this. a it's really fun. long time. The point I was going to make was I, I we had a joke about I was like every time like everyone I I know loves One Piece and I certainly approve of it, but like every time I think about starting it, I remember it's 89 years long. And he's like 89,000 years long, be right. One Piece. He's like he knows most of the story beats, but. <laughs> it's eight miles long, be right. Let me see. I mean, this was like weeks ago we had this conversation. Uh, is it uh, this guy? It is not that guy, but huh. that guy's really fucking cool. Who is he? <laughs> That's Gorazon. Ah. Yeah, he's from. He's a cool dude. He's actually a very cool dude now I think about it. Caesar Clown is uh, the D- only one I have, know. Uh, does he have eight arms and tentacles? No, that's Hachi. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, is he ten times Katakuri. Oh, Katakuri. Ah, oh, he oh, does yeah. have a, Yeah. How could we forget that? How could we forget that? Yeah, Katakuri, dude. This was the fan art of the guy that I was comparing. Uh, I, I said I found this fan art helpful because I always had picture trouble picturing this dude. Send this fan art to Ada so you can... Oh, God! Oh, dude. Well, no, you have to because of my reaction. That's terrifying. <laughs> Ooh. He has a, a snake. He has a snake face. He's and a snake man. He <laughs> a snake face. Snake face is a really funny name for like a gangster. It something. really is. <laughs> Look out! Here comes snake face. Here comes old snake face. <laughs> Can my gangster name be snake face? That's cool. <laughs> sure, be right. It sounds like Your gangster a, uh, name could be snake face. It sounds like a, a name for a gangster and like some don't do drugs. Mm-hmm. Dare. Oh my um, God! You're movie. right. God, I'm Neil. You all answer to Snake Face if you want to get the good stuff. <laughs> and he looks like that fucked up puppet from that Canadian Don't Do Drugs thing where he's like, first one's free, but after that, you just call me. And they're like, no, man, that's whack. And then they leave, and then he takes off his sunglasses, and his eyes are horrible pustules. Ugh. This is a real commercial. <laughs> it's real. I swear to fuck, it's real. I believe you. We, um, when we were getting ready, uh, the the room that we're gonna give to our daughter, we actually did bring up my. Um, you painted that guy on the wall in a giant mural. Why'd you do that? <laughs> uh, that was my idea. Oh, okay. Uh, no, we brought up my my dresser from childhood that my dad had saved for me when he sold our house. Oh my god. And so she's gonna have my dresser from from my room when I was growing up and it was covered with old stickers I put there 30 years ago and uh, one of the stickers was a stupid looking leprechaun that says don't push your luck with drugs and that is especially funny because I smoked weed in that room a lot before (laughs) (laughs) before we gave it to her oh god well, what if before we knew that she was even a thing, be right. What if your be? What if your like daughter come, like this is years from now when she could talk and everything, and she's like, "Yo, Dad, I had this crazy dream." And you're like, "What is it, my sweet baby, darling? Cupcake?" And then she's like, "Yeah, it was really fucking scary. I was near a river, and there was a coffin in it, and it had some smoke coming out. It slowly opened. And it said something about waiting in the gray. What would you do, be right? I'd be like, "You've had the dream. <laughs> this, this is this is this is our this is our curse. This is the curse of our clan. This is." Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm glad you have an adequately anime response to this. We have to become the... Uh, that's also just because I've been reading the um, Ab- Abhorson books again, which are about a family of necromancers that... Uh, this is written by a porson? Uh, <laughs> that's not very specific. It's... <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> That's that was good though. That was some off the cuff. That was some off the cuff dumb but too good to be to get angry about. That was good. Thank you. I like your much. <laughs> Uh, no, the the Abhorson books are about a family of necromancers. Um, uh, where it, the the necro the, the being the Abhorson is like the kingdom's necromancer in chief. What whose job it is to go do that? They they put down other necromancers and free magic creatures. They basically Blair, killer killer. Yeah, they basically go and find necromancers and banish the things they raised and seal them and defeat those rogue necromancers. Do they, se- do they seal them in funny cubes and have a really boring show? <laughs> yes, this is Kakashi. <laughs> I knew you'd remember the name. I'm like, oh god, I hope he says it because I won't be able to remember it. Oh, Kakashi. <laughs> oh, Kakashi. I, Kakashi. What, did, what, it was notably boring. That's what I will say about <laughs> it. You remember it because it was so mediocre. So like, I guess in a way that makes it not mediocre? Was the protagonist, do you recall, was the protagonist voiced by uh, Vic Mignogna, or was it Brian Cox from Inuyasha? It was probably Vic Mignogna, because Brian Cox is signed on with, is still signed on with Ocean Group, I thought. That would, but, it, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. No, I could see, be very wrong. It could be either of those people, and I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> Kagome! <laughs> Kagome, you gotta help me with these fucking cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Kagome! My brother is grooming Rin. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Boo! That's Boo. canon. Boo! That's, that guy shot Abe. Boo! Ab- Inuyasha sequel series. The fuck's wrong with you? Boo! That guy who shot Abe did it because he thought that was his idea. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bring Sorry. it back. Sorry. Full circle. <laughs> you, you know what else I want to bring full circle is I've had many moons to ruminate on uh, many w- moons. what I what I didn't like about that Doctor Strange movie and and the, the, oh yeah it has been a couple of moons uh, the girl the girl and her family and and why that why, like I finally put into words what irked me about that okay. And it struck me that they were trying to claim to to, to somewhat you would you could say disingenuously claim the woke credit of normalizing families by uh, d- you know depicting her in a household with same sex parents, mm-hmm. but they didn't want to commit to that past the point by by having the moms interact with either each other or her. Uh, they didn't want to commit to that by having them. Uh, on screen for longer than they could plausibly subtitle over for the Chinese version. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so they could, you know, so it's like, my sisters, you know, like in the oh, Chinese yeah, version, you yeah. know, it's, or the, my aunts, or <laughs> my two friends. My funny aunts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess, I guess they that's what. Or they could just pull the fucking Sailor Moon bit and be like, oh, they're cousins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're just cousins. <laughs> See how they incest over each other? Fuck! <laughs> that show was really popular. Bill, in... whose idea was this? We fucked up! That Sailor Moon was really popular in Georgia for some reason. In Alabama? <laughs> really popular in Texas. Uh... Got him! So I, I read a book recently. Mm. Uh, I went to the library. and Those got... exist still. Yes, Your local they, library. Yes, I went to my local library. And I got... I was looking for science fiction books, and mm. I found a uh, Asimov title that Ooh. I have yet to read, and I picked up another one because I saw it had the little um, science fiction sticker on it, mm-hmm. and because it's called The Bear. The Bear. <laughs> the Bear. <coughs> and the sequel, The Lager Bear. The Lager Bear. <laughs> the Lager Bear. For context, there's a... British show called the, the Gone Wrong Show, and the premise is that it's a live presentation of uh, oh, like a local theater of, groups. Like, yeah, local theaters putting on a play, but a whole bunch of shit goes wrong in it. And uh, the re- reality, of course, is all of this shit is deliberately going wrong. But within the context and the fantasy of it all, it's all yeah. accidents. And there's a scene 
where they're doing a like an American play, so all the British actors have really shitty American accents. Yeah. And one of the characters is trying to ask for a beer. So she's like, Can you hand me the beer? <laughs> <laughs> the beer is right next to a little bear statue. So he keeps handing her the little bear going, The beer. <laughs> she's like, No, it's, the it's, beer. It's just this long back and forth that like stops being funny and then loops around to being funny again. Yeah. Where it's like, not the beer. The bee. <laughs> ah, yes. The bee. As <laughs> he just gives her the same fucking bear over and over and over again. And that, uh, like, that got quoted even more playing Elden Ring. Because there are beers. There, there's there are the bee. Bees. And then there's the lager bee. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. So there were, there's like a lot of moments in that game where like you'll see the tiny bear and then the giant one ambushes you. So it's not like not the bear, the bear, the longer <laughs> bear. Uh, but so anyway, insane. here's my little book review. Uh, the bear by. We're done with it yet. Yeah, I finished it today. Oh, why is the book bark in there then? Because that's where I. I like, usually stick the, it in the middle for some reason that's too. That's where I like started reading and then I finished it. Wow, so like, you plowed through. Yeah, I'm a voracious reader. Oh, there is Yee. one letter per page actually looking at the print in the book. Yes, now. it's it's very large print. The first page uh, says the water was. The second page says dark the cold. <laughs> dark the cold. <laughs> it's five pages. Oh, okay. <laughs> Read you half the book, sorry. <laughs> oh, fuck. But Spoilers. Yeah, the, the Bear by Andrew Krivak. Krivak. I don't know how you spell that. Krivak. Um, it is labeled as science fiction. It is barely science fiction. Hmm. Um, barely science barely. fiction? Uh, the premise is that this is a land after basically all of humanity has been destroyed mm. uh it's never explained how that happened and how it happened is not the point of the book yeah um so the vibe of it is a lot more naturalistic um survival fiction as well as with some little bits of fantasy because the animals can talk that's interesting. It reminds me of uh, Ada. You you have the shared trauma of having had to have read uh, Zachariah. Yeah, yeah, Z for Zachariah. I, I, want to, I want to see if her library has that so I can read it again. Oh man, that was that was one that I had to read in school. It was about a nuclear war or the aftermath oh. thereof. Yeah. And this girl is like at her homestead, and she's like the only survivor. And then she finds this like six scientist who's like way older than her, I think. Yeah. And he's like, "We got to repopulate the Earth." And they're like, "That's gross. I don't want to think about that. I'm 10." Yeah. Speaking of that, this this book mostly follows. I mean, the only two humans alive are a uh, a man and his daughter. And uh, I got like two thirds of the way through it before I realized, oh yeah, there hasn't been any like gross um, repopulation, any gross repopulation, or any gross. Um, needless descriptions of her budding body or anything. Yeah. Like they, they just never talk about that. <sighs> Thank fuck. Like, I, it was it was refreshing to not have to read anything gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> budding body. I'm gonna throw Because that's what, feel, that's what these fuckers write. Right. It know. is. Oh. I know, I know. It's just that I, I'm gonna throw up. I... <laughs> you know who doesn't do that shit? Brandon Sanderson. You know yeah. who doesn't do that? Every author who is not He's these not a fuckers. Fucking prevert. You know who doesn't do that? Cormac McCarthy, because the people are too busy getting shot to have their bodies described except the bullets that are entering them. Yeah, yeah budding body to that means budding blooms of blood flying out of their chest cavity when a cannon hits Blooding them. blooms of blood bursting bloodily. Peter Piper before picked word. a pack of murder. <laughs> but yeah, the, the book is has fairly decent uh, prose in it. The uh, And cons? You know what I mean. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, the the ending made me tear up. Aww. Uh, so it's a good I, book, sounds like. Yeah, I liked it. Neat. Uh, this writer also wrote uh, like The Sojourn, I think, which I feel like, yes. Author of the National Book Award finalist, The Sojourn, which I feel like I've heard about before. I so feel like I have, too. I might try to look that up. Interesting. I'm, um, I mentioned the Abhorson books that I'm reading. I'm reading one called uh, Clarial. Uh, all of all of the well, a lot of the Abhorson books are named after their protagonists, and they all have names like that. 
And Clarial is a prequel because it is about this girl who eventually becomes like the main antagonist of the book series. And she's a very, she's the most relatable of all of the protagonists so far. And I'm like, this is just further proof that I would instantaneously become a supervillain the second I had powers because <laughs> all of her motivation is shit. I agree with yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a shame. All of her shit is hashtag relatable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You like chicken nuggets and aren't like other girls too much. You just become the villain. She's also, uh, this part does not necessarily <laughs> apply to me, but she is, um, the the author she's a like openly asexual the character is hmm. right. and and like the it's like it mentions um she's like yeah she tried it uh, doesn't like it has no interest in it yeah. and it's not going to be a part of the rest of the book <laughs> and it's refreshing yeah and the fact that it even bothers to mention that is nice yeah and uh, I'm I'm more just impressed by the uh, the the normalization I guess I don't, I don't know yeah. I don't know how to put it but that it exists and it's not weird yes. <laughs> You okay there, Taylor? You look like you ate a hot pepper. I'm an idiot. That's what... What did you do? I'm holding in laughter this whole time. For what? Because I'm a fucking idiot, what? and you said openly asexual, and all that was playing on head in my loop is... Oh, yes, well, that girl in the Doctor Strange movie is bisexual. Bah! <laughs> That's stupid. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was like making my eyes bulge out. Do you know how many times I scared myself as a kid? Like, you know, if, if they're trying... <laughs> Having sex with a bee? No. They're trying to... Yeah, the, the girl, America Chavez, grows up to be the lady from Bee Movie. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> you like it. jam? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you like jam? Do you like jizz? Oh, oh god! That's what that's what that's what they play in Star Wars. Oh no! It is. It is. Listen to some nice jizz in yeah, Star listen Wars. Yeah, some jizz music. The, the, I love jizz music. That is exactly what it is called. And I just read a lengthy <laughs> w- Wikipedia article about a character who loved jizz music, and uh, that that I I, ch- I chuckled many times. So it's it's perfectly reasonable and not weird at all for your favorite Star Wars character to be like oh i love jizz i love jizz there's there's the, i i have, I have lots of jizz at my apartment yeah, yeah i went to a jizz show want to come back to my house for some jizz yeah what, what, what some jizz i went to a jizz club <laughs> do you like jizz do you want me to put a lot of jizz in your mouth and you can swallow okay now it's getting a little lost <laughs> you know what's real weird is alien jizz <laughs> <laughs> That'll do some crazy shit. Uh, no, I, I was just I was going back to how they were trying to act in the movie like her manifestation of her powers came about because she got scared by that space bee. <laughs> and I was like, if you had that, uh, if you had powers that were that uncontrollable and dangerous, like you would have, they would have manifested a lot sooner than that. Like, do you have any idea? She how once often... watched Brave Little Toaster for the first time. She would have teleported the whole planet to hell. I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was five years old and I was sitting down playing with a rubber skeleton. I got it right aid. And I, I was unsupervised for some reason, and I mashed the face, and it made the skull face contort in a way that I thought made it look scarier. Yeah. And I, sca- I scared myself, and I did it. I would have killed my whole fucking family if I had superpowers. <laughs> this fucking right aid. Context. <laughs> <laughs> this beer ice cream I will kill my whole family I, w- I would have teleported every everything when I saw that a book was red and blue I I would have <laughs> there there I looked it up there's this weird like visual hallucination that you can get with a certain color blue on a certain color red where if you stare at it it's like the blue is moving hmm. on the red. I can I I like after I looked it up and found something that was like specially made to trigger it. I could kind of trigger it, mm. but I remember I was a kid and I had some some fucking Tiny Toons book with like whatever the Porky Pig uh, equivalent was. Hampton. Hampton, and it was red. It had him on it, and it had blue text of the title. And, and the text left off and the page. I at looked you. at it on the floor, and like the text was moving. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. I mean, that would be I alarming. Think, which is <laughs> which is alarming, dude. But... At my age, that would make me fucking scared shitless. Like I'd be so terrified yeah. of that. I just think I smoke too much. Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I was not afraid of the whatever the the what I can only call a ghost cat. Um, and it's another like weird childhood hallucination that you had a ghost cat in there, there was a spot in in my childhood home um where like i could swear i could look into the darkness behind this chair and see like a moving shifting black mass that i always registered as a cat 
Oh, that's cool. She registered it as a cat because her brain could not fathom what it truly was. <laughs> yeah, that that every you know every house does have a multiversal nexus. Yeah. Where uh, especially in the '90s, I mean that was shit was everywhere. Where what you were seeing is truly just a cross, a a shifting cross section of a fourth dimensional being passing through our puny three dimensions. We can't know. comprehend. We couldn't it. comprehend it, so he was just assigned it to a kitty cat. Uh, kitty. <laughs> I'm not afraid of that for some reason. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> but I was deeply afraid of the uh, the moving letters, the gory arcade machines at the uh, bowling alley once. Oh, those was were like yeah. Area 51. I don't know what it was. I just we remember know. being we really. Know. It was. It was. It's probably like, House of the Dead, which was terrifying. I was a very sensitive child. Oh. And uh, of course you were. We all were. Could not handle gore. Mm. So if, if I saw like. Blood and gore, or Al Gore, or something. Uh, <laughs> I would not be having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I would have just if I had superpowers, I would have leveled my neighborhood the night I saw the Wheelers. Like that would have just been it. <laughs> that just would have been it right there, man. That would. That's what superpowers. That's true. What if you had the superpower to fly, but you can only fly at three miles an hour, one inch above the ground? That'd be kind of cool. I'd never need Heelys. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so when you say one inch above the ground, does that mean that you could lay flat? Yeah, yeah you have to be laying flat. Oh, you, you have to be laying flat. Yeah, you, you can't, can't be heal. standing up. So, yeah, you so basically be, you okay. just skeleton so luge everywhere. Is, yeah, so basically you, you land luge everywhere or as uh, you kind of look like a... <laughs> You kind of look like an air hockey puck going yeah. everywhere. <laughs> how, does, how, how does this interact with like things that are on the ground but are higher than an inch like if there was a two inch rock in front of you would you just run into it, it depends or would on your the body, size of the rock would your body autocorrect and just like on top of it uh yeah it depends on the size of it's the rock. this size it's the size oh, of that size it's the size of the bed but it's two inches tall instead of one inch yeah uh, so okay it's like this three, so it's three miles small. per hour you said though yes three what, miles per hour is that slow is, is that slower than normal walking speed that yes. is about that that is how fast i walk <laughs> So yes, it is slower than it normal is a walking. Very speed. very slow walking speed. Uh, and so to answer your two-inch question, yeah. So because it's only the size of, a, I would say it would have to be bigger than a bread box for the <laughs> for the shifting. To so you would just bump into shit. Yeah, so you okay. bump into. It would hurt like shit. It would suck. Yeah, it would suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> Superpowers that suck ass. I like superpowers. S- you might as well not even have. I Justin love- Trudeau's stair falling tri- ability. <laughs> I love superheroes that suck ass. Or superheroes. Super powers that suck ass. They're really funny. <laughs> they crack me up. Like, um, the ability to make birds levitate. <laughs> hey, ostrich? Okay. That would be terrifying. That you would need... For the ostrich, too. Go, go to Australia, hang out with the emus. There's gonna be another emu war, and the oh emus are winning God. once more. Then they can drop <laughs> bombs on the, uh, yeah. Australians from... This time they could drive. <laughs> Um, the ability to talk to, um, the ability to talk to produce. (laughs) I can already do that. (laughs) It's like, wow, that cabbage is really racist. Uh, (laughs) I don't like him. He's not cool. What would a produce say? Exactly. I sat in a field. You can ask the produce all their pronouns. Is, all it does is talk about how homesick it is. And then it talks to, yeah, and then you go over to the zucchinis and they talk about pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> Chiefly how they don't, they didn't know what a pronoun was until the very moment you brought it up. Yeah. Ah. And then you go, but you, you, you brought it up. And they're like, uh-huh, fine, yeah, go ahead and gaslight me. <laughs> of course you would have green skin in pronouns. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> yes. That cucumbers are a kind of melon? Huh. It makes sense. Yeah. I just hate it. Yeah, I hate it too. Did you know a watermelon is classified as a berry? No. Yeah, that's what I've always been told is that they're why because like whatever the de- definition of the, a, how a, the bot- botanical definition for what makes a berry, uh, a watermelon fits all of those criteria. Huh. I forget exactly what the those criteria are. Huh. Quote me on this. 
I, they'll, they'll write a, a paper about fruit research and cite, and citate me as a watermelon expert. Because <laughs> Aidership at all. <laughs> at all, yeah. I know that watermelon tastes delicious. Aidership <laughs> at all the watermelon, I'll be, tell you that be, much. She, <laughs> she put salt, she put salt yeah, on her be, watermelon. It's tasty. With it. No, what the fuck, man? It's good. It's you put a little salt on your watermelon. It's I, tasty. It brings out the flavor. It gives a little yeah. bit of umami. I'm going to tell Lisa to Ooh, do that. I'm trying to put some MSG on it. <laughs> Put some MSG on your watermelon. Yeah, see what happens. Try that. Walter the f- Malone. It's good. Be- <laughs> the flavor you, enhancer. If you eat watermelon, if you enjoy a watermelon, you should try to sprinkle a little salt. Did y'all ever see the cartoon Walter Melon? No. Because it was nothing. <laughs> it's real. Was it's it a one real of those... show. I'm not joking. Was yeah, it one of those it pilots? It was real, but it was nothing. <laughs> what do you mean it was nothing? It, so you he, have seen it. He didn't do anything. What are you talking about? He was stupid. He <laughs> <laughs> could shut up. <laughs> But, I mean, it probably isn't that good. It was on ABC Family, the bargain, the the good value cartoon network. I was gonna say, wasn't um, it just one like one of those pilots that was always in those the things where they were just like, we're just gonna air a bunch of pilots of cartoon shows. So it was a cartoon show based off a comic book, but it was very loosely based off a comic book, and all and it's like one of those European. How do you loosely base yeah. a, co- a a fucking comic about a watermelon? It's not. It's not about a watermelon. It's a guy named Walter Melon. Oh, yeah, yes. he's, he's a man with more the, nose than he's got a very look big, at him. He's got like a pinhead. Oh, nose, I've seen team. him. He's got a very big watermelon like nose. That's his, very British. His, his his the whole concept of the show is that he is a substitute for uh, other fictional characters. Uh, so when a fictional character wants to take a day off, they call Walter Melon and he takes their place for a day. Uh, okay, so he just goes into in, in multiverse hops between all the Basically. fictional characters that he's... So this is just Doctor Strange. <laughs> it's probably better than Doctor Strange. Whoa! Probably. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <It was> fun. <laughs> But yeah, now you know about Walter Mellon too. I, re- you know, I remember I, that I now. A picture of of him where he's like in a Power Ranger outfit. Yeah, in like a Power Ranger outfit, but they all have like sandals and peace symbols and flowers on them. Oh, the what? Power- yeah, there was the Flower Power Rangers. Oh, okay. That that makes more sense. Remember now. that thing about how I don't know math, but I know the fucking yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> you name. You remember the name of the the superhero group. And the hit show Walter Melon. <laughs> I remember like, the, but I don't know Long Division. <laughs> the, well, that's, I'm no better. I mean, I remember like the name of some esoteric henchman from something I liked, and then I that's true. I don't remember where I put my fucking keys. It's called ADD autism, and all three of our all three of us are onset by it. Oh. We're neurodivergent. Yeah, I'm. I I love Divergent. What a great book series. That was a joke. Was First, th- not because d- I don't know if Divergent is good or not, because I can't read. <laughs> I legitimately like get Divergent confused with so many other YA things that came out around the same way. time. What I remember, D- Divergent was the one that like kind of killed that whole genre. Yeah, because oh. it was so they, shit that it killed it. They like boiled it down to the uh, the most basic, most marketable elements of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, just kind of was like... In in trying to like market it, they made it. They pointed out all the problems the genre has. Wow! <laughs> then made it look, man. They just There's tried something like that. They they tried to make. I haven't read them. This is my my repeating of other people's criticism. They tried to combine Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they try to they tried to combine Hunger Games with Warrior Cats. That's. <laughs> That's what it was, because they had the whole dystopian shit, that, and they thought that shit was tasty, and then they liked the whole goofy clans idea of warrior cats, where like, oh yeah, it's clans based on your role and personality in society, woo! So they're like, <laughs> the thing that I remember most from Divergent is that like, <laughs> there's the, I think they're called the erudite, which are like, that means you're smart. Right, right. And they're like, the, the stalwart, that means you're strong. And then there was the brave. And it uh. means you could do parkour. Oh, I remember. They always had to figure out a way to work in a parkour angle in like 2013. They yeah. always had to have a parkour angle worked in there somehow. Yeah, like that story was the Spice Girls of uh, YA novels, yeah. where it was a a group of completely unaffiliated people who didn't know each other until the day that a board of people brought them into a room and said, "You are now in a group." You're and the you Suicide pre- Squad. You are the Suicide Squad. Yeah, Amanda Waller started fucking Spice Girls. <laughs> she came so over and she's like, I'm going to do a funny movie. Long. And it was like, sure thing, bud. 
And you know what? Spice World's better than Suicide Squad. So what does that say about my opinions? Uh, I mean, Suicide Squad is is like really, really low down there. But it's, it's so still bad. True. <laughs> yeah, it's still true. Yes. It's sort of like saying the moon is more than a mile away. Yeah. It's so bad they had to redo the movie. They remade Suicide Squad, <laughs> and it's it called. Okay. I've heard that one's okay. And Harley, the Harley movie. I've talked about that already with the Birds of Prey with the Harley Quinn Harley character. Quinn slash the, Birds of Prey. The Margot Robbie Harley Quinn. That's pretty good. Hmm. That's pretty good. She's like, look upon me and despair. Pretty much. You should, you should, in, in, uh, instead of a dark lord, you shall have a clown. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we went to, uh, to Target a couple days ago, and uh, we're walking past the video game aisle. It, like their their general media aisle, and they had some stuff with uh, Morbius. <laughs> ah, <laughs> like ah, that's that funny. It's Morbid time. It's Morbid time. Mor- I can't wait to Morb. <laughs> Did you see that thing where it was like we, we were all busy that weekend? So have, here's a petition yeah. to have Morbius yeah. brought back into theaters and they again. Did. They're so stupid. <laughs> the, the shit with it's Morbin time is so fucking funny yeah. a guy I follow on YouTube called Mr. Morge uh, he, he's Mr. Morb now yeah well no he, he <laughs> him and his fans set up this thing where he's like okay I'm gonna go into this uh, he's a One Piece streamer, okay. or rather a One Piece content creator, so like analyzing and, and doing other stuff. Gotcha. And so there was going to be this big stream with a bunch of other One Piece content creators all coming together in this big event called The Reverie, which happens every year or so. And uh, th- and they just come on and they discuss One Piece together. Uh, and so Morch was like, all right, before I go on this stream, I'm going to let you all know. I'm going to say, what time is it? And I want you all to spam the chat for like a minute with it's Morgen time. Mm. <laughs> and so he goes in and the second he arrives in the stream it was just constant people spamming it's morgen time for the entire 10 hour stream what and he he left in the first hour <laughs> he left in the first hour and so he had to like a day after do another stream where he had to Please admonish, stop. His, admonish his fan base being like, yo, we need to fucking talk. <laughs> I just said you do it's Morgan time when I say what time is it and only after a minute. You guys did it the whole 10 hour stream. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> you made me look like an idiot. <laughs> That was the goal. That's why they did it. It's mm-hmm. funny. Yep, that's exactly it. I mean, I'm watching this from the, entirely from the perspective of this whole thing is funny. So I appreciated the comedy 100%. Oh, it's I'm hysterical. I'm sure he didn't, but I thought it was funny. Morge is the, the Boggs Benny character of uh, Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hammer. It's me, Morge. Hello, Hammer. It's me, Morge. We did this joke already. I was Probably. about to say sugared ring. Sugar ring. Yeah. <laughs> Ma- Marge, where is my sugar ring? I need to go to nuclear power Pripyat. <laughs> Pripyat. <laughs> I need to go to Chernobyl at my job. Need to go to, to Smith, <laughs> where we do not have a Mr. Bournes to lead us. <laughs> there is, we have seized means of nuclear production. We have we Comrade have Dyatlov King. instead. <laughs> that was the actual guy who was in charge of Chernobyl oh, and wow. fucked it up. Oh, damn. You know names. This boy's got names. This boy's got receipts. Only because of the Chernobyl series on the HBO. Oh, fuck. Yo, the, um, no. <laughs> Spring it was, break. It was driving me nuts trying to figure out, um, so the, the Sea Beast movie. The, the, <laughs> one of the, the captain who was the coolest character in that movie. Well, one of the coolest. The first mate is actually a little bit cooler than him. But, uh, the, the, the piratey captain is, is the guy from Chernobyl. The main guy from the Chernobyl HBO series is him. Oh, mm. Uh, Sportacus from that movie. Yes. Yes. Sure. I, I've already forgotten. From Lazy Town? Yes. That is him. That was what his name was. Sure. I never saw the show. <laughs> <laughs> Chernobyl. <laughs> Just about, that's why the fucking Chernobyl exploded. <laughs> A bunch of fucking puppets and Sportacus showed up. <laughs> yeah. Robbie Rotten. Robbie like, Rotten did it. Look at this isotope I just found. That's how he got cancer. <laughs> No! <laughs> now even you know I am a menace. I hand you the secrets to save the entire human race and the entire universe. <laughs>